Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 460 being recorded on July 26, 2017. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Alan Malmontano. Welcome to the show, everybody. It is a week that has gone by, so we will talk about it on this show. <laughs> we talk, generally... This is the show where we talk about things and we cover topics. I can tell by looking at the rundown on the side that we need to teach Alex a little bit more about abbreviating, abbreviating or shortening some of the listings. Uh, perhaps for that Zalman keyboard <laughs> that takes up four lines of the rundown. And I'm very disappointed that he doesn't say PC per plays with slash mailback. Yeah. Eh. It's it, it's a, a missed opportunity. L E dash B. Yeah. Well, it's a W a slash. A mail with. bag. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we actually will talk about computer hardware and news and reviews and things that have happened. Um, we record the show on Wednesday nights. 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Usually I do that the other Sometimes direction. Sometimes it turns into Thursday mornings. As the uh, show says, does. the show that ends the week on a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we wrap up the week with the PC Perspective podcast. Uh, we do it at pcper.com slash live. So if you want to come uh, hang out in the chat room and talk with us while we do the show, uh, you can ask questions, you can bug us and, and, and help point out our errors when we have brain farts we don't know the answers to specific things the chat is very important that never us. happens never happens never. Never. um if you need a reminder about the event maybe you're a little bit busy on wednesday evenings you need a gentle nudge about hey dummy come over to pcper.com slash live you can go to pcper.com slash subscribe right now phone tablet laptop pc go to any on any of those devices pcper.com slash live oh, i'm sorry slash subscribe and ask for your name and your email address and then i will send you a notification you know, a couple of hours or so, or maybe an hour before we do the live stream. Just so you can do a reminder, you can set your notifications, you can um, alert your personal assistant to give you a heads up that uh, uh, that you'll be you'll be attending the PC Perspective uh, live streaming podcast. It's very important for everybody that you do so. Uh, also, we have um, our Patreon campaign continuing to go at patreon.com slash PC per. Um, this is your place to go if you want to become a monthly contributor to us. If you feel like you're running an ad blocker or you think the content that we've done recently is good and it warrants your attention and, um, and that, that you feel like you want to support this group as advertising becomes much more difficult to attain, you can do so there. It can be a dollar a month. It can be three, five, ten, twenty dollars a month, all the way up to like a billion. I don't know what what the maximum is in the field really in dollars a month have to hold your pinky to your mouth when you say I that. tell you what if you do that for just one month I'll actually grandfather you in to oh. be a lifetime member oh okay right I mean that seems like and a you fair. own Alan and, and at least at least, at Alan. least Maybe, so that, that's interesting yeah I'd, I'd come and dust your house yeah in one of those skimpy little um, made French costumes. made oh, outfits French made sure yeah. wow for a billion dollars, I would absolutely do that. Yeah, yeah. Fly them out every week. Oh, Hell, yeah. do that yeah. for a million dollars. Oh, oh, yeah, no, and we'll I meant I once. would do it. But yes, I will definitely make <laughs> you Josh do it. Wait, Josh, <laughs> let, let, let's, keep, let's keep going, Josh. Uh, yeah. Seems easier. 100,000. Yeah, but what would you do for 100,000? <laughs> How about 350? How much for a quarter? <laughs> Uh, so, and also, as we do every week with the Patreon, uh, if you become a new patron, you are a new member to the group, uh, and or you increase your patronage, Patreon contribution, Patreon uh, I will call you out in uh, your name and thank you on the live stream. And sometimes we have nobody up here yet. Okay. So we will do that throughout the show. Uh, we have a couple of interesting things that started this week as we try to increase some of the video stuff we do. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably have already seen this. If you're not, if you just catch the live stream and maybe listen to the MP3 download uh, of the podcast, you may have missed some of this. Uh, we're going to do a regular occurring mailbag, which is basically one person sitting in front of a camera uh, with a microphone, reading questions and answering them for, you know, 15 minutes or so a week. I did the first one uh, last Thursday. <clears throat> I will be recording the next one tomorrow. Um, and it's pretty cool in that we just, you know, ask your questions on the YouTube channel or in the comments on the post. We'll read them, pick out, you know, a half dozen or so to do. 
and we will run them through that way. It will probably be me for the majority of the time, but we'll get some other other guys in there if I'm out of town or whatever doing other things. Um, so we have that. That was a long requested uh, a feature or something, I guess you would call it on the site. Is it a feature or is it a bug? It's oh, it's it's mostly a bug for okay. sure. Yeah. And then we also did a thing um, on Tuesday called PC per plays, which is basically uh, you can switch over here to this area uh, where uh, we sit over on our other set here that Jim is now occupying. We can't see him, but the Jim that the Jim is occupying, and we're gonna like play games. They could be new games like Player Unknown Battlegrounds that we played last week, or maybe next week we play uh, Star Wars Tie Fighter. Or maybe we play. So we're playing old retro games. No, Battle L Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is a new game. High Fighter. Yeah, but we could play old games too. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna make you play Mist maybe one time. Mist. Yeah. Original Mist. Okay. How, how quickly can you figure out these puzzles before I've we make fun of you? Probably still memorized all of them. That's what I was thinking. I think I brought that up specifically on Tuesday when we did oh, our other live sorry. stream. Yeah. Well. Oh. And it's, I think that's perfect. So we're gonna do stuff Watch like that. Watch as Al speeds runs miss. Exactly. <laughs> How far can uh, can he get in an hour and twenty minutes? Just depends on your CD seek times. It, yeah. Actually. The goal the goal yeah. is just to do more uh, a content that is supposedly easier in, in in terms of we're not doing benchmarking, testing, evaluating, analyzing, but more of community uh, personality. Hey, come hang out with us for a little bit. You know, we're trying to interact with you. The chat room runs during the PC per plays. Um, Playing some of the old ones. We answer questions cool. on the like, mailbag. You know, talk about uh, reminiscing of the old times on like 286 is playing Wing Commander. Or during whatever. during that episode, we talked about Ultima Online and my yeah. my. I, there were recommendations that they gave me a place to go. Uh, <laughs> that was really good. I saw that picture. Well, pop well. Up on my screen. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Uh, we maybe we get into a retro server and figure out how to play Ultima online again. So there's there's that, some cool ideas we have there that we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna work through. Sure, it's amazing. It's pretty good. Are you using it as a thumbnail for the podcast? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. That's definitely it. Who made that one for us? <laughs> that's that right. Anthony. Uh, <laughs> that's really fast action. How do I? It. Somebody put a link to that in the show notes so I can click on it real fast because that deserves John, to be shown. I on just the put live it stream. in the chat too. You did. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. It's the only oh, thing I man. see on here. Oh, that's um, good. Is it in there? Somebody? Somebody? Bueller. 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 Show notes. Come on. I'm working on it. He's getting there. He's it's trying. Paste it in. We're gonna have them open. Yeah, it's it's, it? it's uh, Anthony. It there you go. Oh, Antonio. You go. Oh, I can't it's remember. Cut it off. An yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. Who am I? Am I Anderson Cooper? Is that <laughs> you? Might wait. You're wearing a North Face. Uh, he's, he's, he's outside. That somewhere. person's outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's really I good. Yeah. Josh is so bad. I like the ticker at the bottom. <laughs> SSD is still not ten cents a Oh man, Ethereum pricing, cr yeah, crash. Yeah, probably, probably saying crashes. Yeah, it looks like somebody's uh, Anderson Cooper because it's during AC. This is always late under the logo. Popular that's pretty good. Is I, that's, that's good for. I think for I think that's going to be that's going to be used quite often. Oh, that's great uh, throughout this. That's uh, that's that's pretty great. All right, uh, so let's get to actual things. I guess I guess if we have to, uh, let's first talk about the ASUS ROG Zephyrus uh, GX501. So this is a gaming notebook. This is the Max Q Design gaming notebook. Max Q Design was announced during Computex. Uh, by NVIDIA as a <clears throat> an attempt to find, as they say in this slide, the perfect balance, kind of like the peak efficiency of performance um, while, uh, you know, not going to the, like, I don't know, how, what do you, like the, the shift in the hockey stick of power consumption, right? Where, yes, you can get more power yeah. as you, uh, more performance as you increase power, but at, at the cost of being able to have lighter, thinner, quieter machines. Um, so the they announced three, a Clevo, an Asus, and MSI. We have the Asus one here. Ken actually did uh, the testing and review for this. It's a unique design. You can see the specs. Core i7, 7700HQ. That's a quad-core hyper-threaded part. Uh, the GTX 1080 with Max-Q design, which has a typo I just found. Uh, 24 gigs of Wasn't memory. 15.6-inch uh, 1080p, 120 hertz G-Sync monitor. 512-gig NVMe SSD, so that's nice. Uh, 802 11 AC, Thunderbolt 3, HDMI 2, USB 3.0, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. $2,700 is also an important part to note there. So That's important. It's 
it's expensive, but honestly, in terms of uh, other GTX 1080 based gaming notebooks, it's not like the second cheapest one I could find, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what about let's start with the physical design, because that's very unique on this. What's stood I want to know what you can do with that shelf that's above the uh, the keyboard. Uh, well, you can warm your hands on it. That's where the uh -huh. components are. You, you, you could put your cup of coffee on there and keep it warm. Yeah. Yeah. But don't if spill your it. ice cream was a little bit too cold. Don't spill it. So the, the, what they did was they moved the keyboard all the way all the way to the front. Yeah. Like closest to the body of the person using it. And mm -hmm. then they moved the touchpad off to the right. Now, this mm -hmm. isn't the first time we've seen this. That's true. We saw it on the MSI, no, the MSI. GT83 Titans, the yeah. ones with mechanical keyboards. Yeah. They do mechanical this. keyboards for ob and the obvious GPUs. reasons. Although that keyboard was all the way at the front. This, is, this, this one is, is all the way at the front. front. This, there, that's oh. a rubber wrist rest. Oh, and there's a wrist rest the, you yeah, add yeah. to it. Interesting. It's just wrist a rest. rubber piece that, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what did you think about using the keyboard in that kind of position? Uh, I thought on a desk or other surface it's great the keyboard is fairly tactile pretty responsive a good impl implementation of a chiclet keyboard the trackpad while kind of weird that's off to the side per perfectly usable tracks pretty well the clicks of the buttons are nice however as soon as i put it in my lap and <laughs> tried to use it it was extremely challenging we'll say essentially you end up having to move the machine all the way up on your lap so that the keyboard still sits where about your wrists are, mm -hmm. and you just kind of shift the entire weight distribution forward, which yeah. is not exactly comfortable for... Yeah. Even though this is a light gaming laptop, it's not a light laptop in general. Correct. So. It's light for gaming laptops. It's not light for laptops. Yes. Yeah. Uh, probably the most... And in, in, as we talked about, the, all the componentry is in this section up here. Uh, that's where the CPU and GPU rest and where the fans and everything are. And and it's a very thin profile, right? It's only um, uh, 0.67 inches thick, 78, what is it, uh, 17 millimeters or so thick. And that's pretty good. I mean, that's, it's, that's impressive. It's thinner than this notebook. MacBook Pro I have. Now, the bit. secret of that is this part right here. If you look at this profile shot, like, so there's there's two profile shots here to look at. This one is with the lid closed. This is one is with the lid open, and, and there's a mechanic where as the lid opens, a a piece of the bottom, like the platform of the bottom, actually telescopes out a little bit. There's like a little mechanical hinge that pushes it down. It all feels surprisingly solid for something like this. I you, agree. you would think that it might feel a little jank and break, and it actually is an extremely solid mechanism, and we actually took that plate off, and the hinge is really well designed, so you... If you want to like clean the fans underneath there because you get access to the fans and the heat sinks for the CPU and the GPU, mm -hmm. you could do that relatively easily. That panel comes off. They even include a screwdriver in the box, which is interesting. The screwdriver only works for the screws for that panel. The rest are a Torx bit that they don't include. Of course. So, I mean, it's actually still a relatively serviceable design considering the sort of weird aspects of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um Pretty good connectivity, you know, four USB 3.0 ports, full size HDMI. Performance wise, uh, we found the GTX 1080 in this Max Q configuration, um, which, as we were explained today, is expected to be 85 to 90 percent of the performance of a typical GTX 1080 in like a much larger, higher end gaming notebook. Um, we don't have any of those. Right, we didn't have any other 1080 gaming notebooks in the office. So we compared it to a desktop 1080 and a desktop 1070, uh, and it's it fell between the two for the most part, right? Yeah, and the, with the exception of GTA 5, which had a big CPU bottleneck that we were hitting apparently. But like Dirt Rally, uh, a little bit closer to the 1070 and the 1080. You know, GTA 5 was the big gap, but it was still pulling over 70 frames per second at our at our very high image quality settings. Um, Is there yeah, like a so we, we tested all the normal GPU games we test with the settings at 1080p because this is a 1080p 120 hertz panel. We mm -hmm. always like to test at the native panel resolution of the notebook because that's ideally how you'd be spending your time, especially yep. if you have a portable gaming laptop. Uh, so everything was completely playable. All of the titles we tested, all the ones we ran through, Witcher 3, Tomb Raider, all these really demanding titles were perfectly playable at uh, reasonably well, high settings? Yeah, I mean, it's... 
mostly max out settings on every game. And it's a G-Sync panel, so if you're running at 45 frames a second yeah, it's, and dipping between 40 and 50, it's still a smooth experience. Yeah. You're not getting the 120 hertz native out of the panel, but it's still a pleasant yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, we did notice a couple of things that stood out perf-wise. Uh, there, there was, in a couple of games, like I think in Tomb Raider, there was more frame time variance than on the desktop systems. Mm. Um were there other games that stood out like that? There's a little bit more on Hitman, for example. Uh, is it, is there the like others. a? Do we know if there's like a hard power limit for this, or is it a thermal limit? Like, what uh, is so this? there definitely is. There's definitely a hard power limit. Okay. To to the hardware, um, and that's and that's probably what's accounting for it, right? It's kind of yeah. getting up to that point, uh, and and kind of you know wavering number, back and forth among. Does that number change when you go on the battery? Um, for Max Q, I don't. Sometimes, no. usually, like usually it does. Yes. Yeah. Actually, yes, it definitely does because it's only a hundred watts from the battery, almost always okay. in all the gaming machines. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so you're definitely drawing more than a hundred watts when you're doing this CPU and GPU and all okay. that. All that yeah, I think it's like a two hundred thirty watt power supply. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't remember. think you're getting close to that, but yeah. Uh, actually, if I had my notes or something, I, I know I'd be the surprised of this to see a laptop is, draw two thirty off the battery. Um, <laughs> that'd be a lot. So even though the GTX 1080 with Max Q design doesn't perform up to the level of a desktop GTX 1080, yeah. which we had a conversation with NVIDIA today concerned because we're using a desktop processor in this comparison versus a mobile processor. Even though the mobile processor is a quad-core hyper-threaded, it's not going to clock as high right. for as long. Um, I, my argument is that tough, like that's kind of like the comparison that somebody's going to make. Yeah. Right? For twenty seven dollars I can build one hell of a gaming desktop. Correct. Right, you're going to want how it compares against the desktop machine. Yeah. 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 Uh, is it fair that you should also want to see how it compares to other gaming notebooks? Absolutely it is. Sure. We just, like, we don't get to keep those. Yeah. Right? And so running new tests with updated drivers is impossible. Right. So unless any, only things people want to see are Unigen Heaven and 3D Mark, that's kind of not <laughs> a really feasible thing for us to do. Yeah. Um, but even though it, it kind of was... A little bit faster than the desktop GTX 1070. I still think that's actually pretty impressive for a laptop. For the, but for not just laptop, for but like laptop. the thin laptop. Yeah. Right. That was quiet. Like we used it. That's the laptop we used on the uh, PC per plays mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, stream. And, you didn't hear and the like, fan yeah. noise was fine. Like yeah. we were wearing lobs. It wasn't really a problem. I mean, yeah. 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 The part of the Max Q design is sub 40 dBA sound, which is yeah. Yeah, pretty to, good even for like a desktop good. graphics card. To do that and think get about to it, like, like 1070 yeah. level performance, that's pretty. Yeah, that's and pretty good. this lap, like you can carry around this laptop with you from class to meetings to whatever. Like yeah. It, yeah. it'll fit in a normal backpack. It's light. It won't sort of break your back in that regard. Yeah. Like if you're, I still don't think it's very usable in your lap, but that isn't necessarily necessarily a knock against the whole Max Q thing because. Some of them have keyboards in the regular position. Right. We're trying to get some of those machines into test. The other, the other perf, perf worth noting is that we did. Um, so one of the things you got to be careful of when testing a notebook is the thermal limitations. Is that you know after you game for an hour, yeah. does the performance change? Ken did a test here on Dirt Rally uh, where you, we ran the benchmark immediately Initially, yeah. upon starting the test, and then we looped the benchmark for 45 minutes and then retested it, and performance was pretty much identical. Um, so that's that's a good sign, and that. Asus and NVIDIA engineered the, the the design of the system, the infrastructure, and the thermals to be very consistent from yeah. beginning to end. So that's yeah. that's a plus. The CPU and storage we won't really touch on. It's really fast. It's a quad-core hyper-threaded part with an NVMe drive. Yep. It was among the fastest... It was the fastest laptop we've ever tested. It was the fastest, okay, it was the fastest laptop and CPU tests, like yeah. transcoding, video editing, rendering. Because it has that actual quad-core Because it's an actual right? quad-core part. Yeah. And it's a new quad-core part. Like, yeah. uh, we had tested quad-core parts in the past, but, you know, other other uh, iterations. And so, stuff. like, did we do the battery test? Battery on? test sucks. <laughs> yeah, this graph right here is your battery life. And that's Something's basically... Gotta give. And it's basically just browsing. Yeah, that's only browsing. Like, it's a light battery but test. But the, the, the GTX 1080 doesn't... It clocks down. It clocks but, down, but it doesn't go off. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not a Optimus design with Intel yeah. graphics and stuff like that. It's yeah. just a 1080. Yeah. Which has its advantages. Is, the, is the, the graphics is disabled, right? What do you mean? The Intel graphics. Sorry. Oh. Uh, Did you try to run Quick Sync and it wouldn't run or something like that? Maybe not. I don't know. I can't remember if I got it to run ultimately okay. or not. I think I might have installed the driver and got it to that's, run. That's, that's what you sacrifice when you buy a gaming laptop. Yep. And, and I'd still like to see this address because you would think there would be a way to just really totally turn it off, even if it requires a reboot of the system. Yeah, and use only the and Intel And use only GPU. the Intel GPU Cause, cause or something like that. It is. It's installed, right? Now, it so. may, there may be some engineering reason why 
you you can't have both for the max Q design implementation or something. I don't Maybe. know. I, I can't think of what it would be, but uh, you would you would assume that Asus and Nvidia wouldn't want to see this graph. So if it were an easy fix, yeah, they would do it. Uh, pricing is high, like we talked about at the beginning. Um, and even though I still think this is actually a really good machine, it's very unique. Um, the keyboard and touchpad, the touchpad location on the right of the keyboard takes some getting used to. It's just like this habit of going, going the, using the center. It. Like I, yeah. I very often am typing and using both of my thumbs to scroll, click, mm -hmm. do whatever. Um, can't really do that on this. Uh, I, I'm still curious to see what the other Max Q designs do to see what their thermals and performance look like in this comparison. Uh, while also, you know, seeing what they were able to do with the form factor, um, see if Asus is able to make a thinner machine by making this decision or not. So we'll see. Any more thoughts on it, Ken, before we open it up? Not really. Right. We did, and now that you mentioned that, we did actually try to open it up, but man, that was not obvious. You mean the the machine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was, just, I was not even going to begin to get into that. Uh Anybody else? Questions? Thoughts? No. XQ? Seems right. cool. Uh, we do have uh, two new patrons to uh, thank you. Pure Havoc just pledged $3 to our Patreon. Thank you very much, Pure Havoc. And uh, Poopa Loop. P Poopa Loop just pledged $3 as well. Sweet. Thank you, Mr. Poopa Loop. Uh, for for becoming a uh, patron that, subscriber, that's Mister Poopaloop to you. Uh, yes, yes, I would call him no no other than that to be sure. The the chat brings us a good point. You yes. can't have Optimus and G Sync because G Sync the display has to be connected oh, directly to the GPU. Okay. Optimus it's connected uh -huh. to the Intel GPU. Yep, that's true. That's incompatible. A good point. See, if only G Sync was, was an reason. open technology, you could probably only. get that to work. You still have to depend on Intel's implementation of the technology. Intel doesn't support FreeSync today. Yeah. There. Just throwing it out. But there. are there any FreeSync laptops? Yeah, probably. I mean, it just I figure they could. I would go figure, with that as well. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you figure there could be something with like a you know a DisplayPort multiplexer or something. Yeah, kind of then you're adding you can, extra complexity and cost and I space know. of the board. And yeah, but yeah. you'd get an awful lot more battery life. Yeah, but do you really that, care about that, battery like, life for a gaming laptop? But AMD like, Robert know. says yes. There are free sync laptops. Okay. Yeah. I just can't name a single model off the there, top there of my head, unfortunately. The, um, the Asus made a laptop that was a. Uh, uh, it was a, a AMD processor, AMD GPU. That one has free sync. I know that. I just I can't remember the model there we numbers. Go. There's so many up there. So. Um, okay, let's take a look at. Oh, real quick, Sebastian posted a review of this enormous item in our rundown, the Zalman ZM-K900M RGB Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. You left out the word gaming in the rundown, though. Oh, man, if you're going to put all those words. It, it was getting too long. Oh, oh okay. How, how big of a heatsink fan does it have on it? Uh, Zalman only... I think Zalman, Zalman, I think heatsinks. They make those orb fans, right? Yeah. That's the, yeah. That's the ones that had, uh, were there SLI certified? Or NVIDIA certified Zalman coolers, I believe, that uh, had like the for the Enforce platform. That's that's what I remember as well. Mm, yeah. Uh, AMD Robert points out ROG Strix GL702ZC is a FreeSync notebook with 120 hertz panel, as an example. Thank Although, you very much. Yeah, I'd also nice. point out uh, Mobile G Sync is EDP. Um, it is. There are no modules in Mobile G Sync. Yeah. But no. it still has to be connected to the NVIDIA GPU. Right. But yeah, the NVIDIA GPU is now what controls it all. Yeah, but I, I, I thought Intel's GPU implementation supported the variable refresh, the mobile. Yeah, but it's not refresh. just it's not I just know, variable refresh. Like there's a lot of other stuff that goes yeah. into the gaming version. I think even it's, AMD it's would, like would tell you it's is like it's so the close. Technology you're thinking yeah. of. Yeah, it's so. Here's the thing: it's so close to get to ninety percent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right, and then it's that uh, last ten percent that makes the difference of a good product and a shitty product, mm. and it takes ninety. 90% of the work. Anyway, uh, back to the Zalman keyboard, not a cooler. The ZMK900M is an RGB gaming keyboard under 100 bucks, mechanical. Uh, Sebastian took a look at, look at that. Look at those RGBs. Z Machine Gaming Gear. Z Machine Gaming Gear. It has the Z Engine, uh, yeah. which is the above mentioned 1000 hertz polling rate. Uh, requires no software installation and is universally compatible with any operating System. It supports USB and PS2. Really? Yeah. 
Comes with a I fancy bet you it doesn't glow with PS2. Oh, look at that box. That is a pretty nice box. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. Uh, there's your USB to PS2 adapter, so I know what year it is. Does the RGB still work? It can't. <laughs> There's no right? way it works. Yeah. <laughs> oh. There's no way. Uh, it's plastic, but it felt solid, according to Sebastian. Uh, soft rubber pads, keeping it in place on both the, uh, if you lay it flat or if you angle it up. Uh, I I, I kind of want to try a USB to PS2 adapter in like 2017. Like, it, I just want to know. It I works need to the know. same as it always has? Maybe. Yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. key rollover. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, they're the same ones they were selling 20 years ago. They just got a lot of stock left. <laughs> Probably true. Uh, Does it stay, stay Logitech somewhere on that adapter? <laughs> this uh, this Zalman keyboard comes in blue, black, brown, and red switches. So you're all the varieties you can you can yeah, you, you, you're covered. Not all, but majority of. Are they actually cherry switches, or are they equivalent? Switches? Uh, Did you take a keycap off? No, I think Zim, Zalman does their own. Okay. What are they? Blue. Oh, the Khalil Blues. Those are one of the yeah. leading third-party ones that people seem to like. Cool. Man, those patents expired. It seems like a good really keyboard. Rushed the market. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Sebastian gave it a gold. Yeah, they award. are Kaylee Blue. It's eighty-nine bucks. That's pretty cheap for a mechanical keyboard. It's a lot for a lot of people for a keyboard in general, uh, but for a gaming keyboard, it's uh, uh, pretty pretty good. So, yeah. Why Why would you use blue keys on a gaming keyboard? Because blue keys are awesome. They're awesome for typing, but yeah, whatever. I prefer like I love my blues. Like you'll it, take my blue keyboard over it, my cold dead hands. Yeah, but it gets annoying. Sounds for, like a song. It all depends on the ratio and what you do to things. If you game thirty percent of the time, you probably want a blue. If you game seventy percent of the time, you probably want reds. Yeah, okay. I don't know what makes a keyboard a gaming keyboard. I think I think, I think, I think browns is a good. Nope. Burn it what? down, please. No. I'm just saying compromise. <laughs> it's a compromise. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that's what I usually settle on, just because, you know, I do a lot of typing, but occasionally I do some gaming, so. What switches are on an Xbox to figure out controller? What the, what the brown one is. <laughs> an Xbox controller? Yeah. Do they have cherry switches? Just kind a, of, it, that's not a... Not yet. It's not a switch. <laughs> just a <laughs> piece of rubber. What do you mean? It's a rubber nubbin. A, a rubber dome. A nubbin <laughs> button and things happen. That's, yeah. That's all there is. Um... <laughs> so let's talk about the Microsoft Surface Pro 2017 and the Apple iPad Pro 2017, 2017. because we're not allowed to have numbers after things yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. Microsoft Surface Pro dropped the numerics, even though very, I see I saw a lot of people that still just call this the Surface Pro 5. Uh, I just yeah. couldn't build myself to do it. So I originally got in the Apple iPad Pro 10 and a half inch and was going to do a review of that item. And um, I was using it and and. I basically came to the conclusion that just a review of it didn't make a whole lot of sense, and, and in reality, I wanted to. I was I was personally trying to use the iPad Pro as a replacement for my laptop. Like, okay, it's going to have better battery life. I know that. What can it do? What can it not do? It sounds familiar. I've always wanted the idea of. I've always loved the idea of having a stylus for note taking and stuff like that. That's why I've I've gone through so many of these different like tablet comp PCs. Yep. Um, so. I started, I, I got some other hardware, and I got the iPad Pro 12.9 inch as well, both of them using the new SOC, a the beast of a screen. Yeah. And then I got in um, the equivalent Surface Pro 5. Uh, equivalent to what? Price to the 12.9. To the 12.9? Yeah. Yet. Okay. Yeah. But it looks like it has a smaller screen. Um, so, yeah, the specifications look like this, and it's, and it's always awkward to look at spec comparisons between an ARM architecture and an x86 architecture platform. Yeah. Um, but if you look at just the screen, it's the the, the Surface Pro has 12.3 um, inch. The iPad Pro has 12.9. Okay. But um, it just feels larger than that. Like it's they're both they're all 3.3 by 2 aspect ratios. Although if you look at these devices side by side, it does not appear that way. Yeah. Because of the way the bezel of the Surface Pro is, it doesn't feel that way. Yep. Um, now, there is some concessions here because to, in order to get the Surface Pro to the price you wanted, which was $999 in this case, we got 4 gigs of RAM and 120 gig SSD. 4 gigs of RAM is very low. It's very low. Yeah. I agree. They it's shouldn't a, ship a Surface Pro with 4 gigs of RAM. I would, I would agree with that sentiment. It's a Core i5 7300U, so it's a two-core, four-thread. The Apple A10X is six-core, three high-performance, three high-efficiency. Uh, the GPUs are very different. Um, it's interesting because, you know... Pricing-wise, when you when you combine the tablet, the keyboard, and the pen or pencil, 
they're within ninety dollars of each other, like twelve forty eight and eleven fifty, right, or eleven sixty, something like that. Um, so they are very like price equivalent parts. Um, Both but, completely un, 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 not upgradable. Correct. That's true. Yep. <laughs> Both very uh, difficult to take apart and repair, according yeah. to iFixit. Um, but you can see actually how the the iPad Pro twelve point nine and the Surface Pro. Uh, ten, like they look very similar in size and scope. The 10 and a half inch iPad Pro, very different. Um, from a hardware design standpoint, there's a couple of things that stand out to me. One, if you look at this as, if you look at these as just tablets, if you're only buying a tablet, you're not buying a keyboard, um, the, the, the kickstand on the Surface Pro is amazing. Mm -hmm. it maintain, I maintain it to be like the best feature of a generation of devices that have been built, right? Because uh, without a keyboard or a cover, the iPad, all iPads, are awful. Yeah. There's literally, like... You are you, the kickstand. If you, yeah, if you want to watch a movie <laughs> on it, dummy, you hold it up, yeah. right? Or find someplace on that plane to yeah, prop, prop it up. Prop it against something, right? yeah. And, and the very slick bottom will fall out from under you anyway, so yep. it doesn't really matter, right? So sure, but for the $100 you're saving, you could buy the smart cover without the keyboard. You could, you could. I guess. Yeah. Um, That's true. The... Uh, otherwise, if in just tablet mode, the iPad is just, the iOS is just clearly built for a touch interface and Windows 10 is not. Yeah. They have, you know, it's they have better. a tablet mode. It's okay. Yeah. You know, Microsoft tried Windows 8.1 or Windows 8 uh, and people hated it. And so they went back to what people wanted and what they wanted was an operating system meant to have a keyboard and a trackpad attached to it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so as a tablet, it's hard. It's a hard sell for a, for a Windows device. Um, the keyboards on these um, actually were all surprisingly good, like to type on them. I, I did a lot of typing on the 10 and a half inch and the 12.9 inch. Yep. There's a iPad little Pro. bit of a learning curve. There right? is, but the like, keyboards feel much better than I expected. The yep. Surface Pro smart cover, is that what they call it? What do they call theirs? Uh, smart typing cover. Smart, smart type typing cover or something so, yeah. is really, really good. The touchpad works well. Everything feels nice. My biggest complaint about it, and you can kind of get an idea of this here. It's hard to tell. The... The Surface Pro was stable on a desk. Even even somebody even on a desk now. The yep. iPad Pro is wobbly, and yours is actually less. You've got you have the. Because I have the smaller one. I have this uh, have 9.7. 9.7. Yeah. The 12.9 with its keyboard. It's too big. The surface area of the keyboard that that is creates the base for the device. Yeah. Is not a high enough ratio compared to the weight, the, the weight and height and the, of yeah. the screen. Yeah. Did right. you use the photo of that in the review? Of uh, which one? I had. Took the photo of the keyboard uh, folded all the way out on the 12 inch one. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. This is another photo that kind of shows you. So, this is the 10 and a half inch, and this is the 12.9 inch. And even though they made the triangle bigger uh, and stuff, it's it just always felt like it was going to fall over. You also don't have any adjustment of the angle, it, which yeah. is a pain. It did fall over a couple of yeah, times. It did. Yeah, it did. You're right. Well, um, the kind of on its own. The 10 and a half probably did better. The 10 and a half did way better. Yeah. It still wasn't perfect, but it definitely did better than 12.9. 12.9 was kind of laughably. Um, large, large, yeah, and even like I said, even though it, it's the same three by two screen and it, and it and it's not much larger physically, it just felt different in the yeah. hand, even when using it. Um, you know, the pen and the pencil I thought were actually really comparable uh, in terms of performance and usability. You know, you've got the battery difference because you charge it in that dumb way on the Apple Pencil, but it's actually super convenient because you don't have to worry about finding a battery. Stick it in the. Whereas with the Surface the Pen, it requires a quadruple A battery. Which, if you're at the, if you're at a conference or you're at the airport, you might have difficulty finding. But how a long does it last back. on that? A long time. Okay. A long time. But so does the Apple Pencil. And probably so, probably not you, as long as the. The problem with batteries that last a long time is that you forget yeah. to charge them. Yeah. That was my problem with my when I wore the Pebble was I could go four days. So four days go by, I'm like ah, oh, yeah. and then the fifth oh, day I'm yeah. like eh, crap, I forgot <laughs> I forgot to bring that with me or whatever it was. Right. So, uh, the screens are both. And you can't bring a spare one. Right. Right. That is one benefit I'll give battery powered things is you can yeah. toss a couple of spares in. That's true. You can yeah. if you always have another quadruple A battery in your bag, you'll yeah. be good. Yeah. yeah. The screens are all excellent quality. Uh, the edge goes to the iPad Pros on that. They have better quality. So again, I say this a couple times in the review. Well, they're the 120 Surface, hertz now. So. The Surface Pro has amazing features like the screen quality on the Surface Pro is outstanding. The yeah. battery life on the Surface Pro is outstanding uh -huh. compared to other tablets, Windows tablets. But because they're being compared to a company that does things amazingly well all the time. Right. Um, it looks bad. So like this, the Surface Pro screen is is awesome. Mm -hmm. Terrific pixel density, um, uh, very high color depth, um, 
but the the screen on the iPad is you know DCI P3. It's 120 hertz. Yep. It's a much better screen. Yeah. Now the number of times that that matters, that difference matters, is minimal. I think the 120 hertz the 120, matters. I, you can feel it. It's smoother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I didn't find an application or a use case where I felt like it was a benefit to me other than moving around the operating system. Sure. Right. The idea might be that eventually, you know, VRR gaming, variable refresh gaming comes to iOS and that all gets integrated and it kind of works that better that way. That would make things way. smoother. And, um, yeah. But I don't, think we're, I don't think we're there yet. We talked about the keyboards already. Connectivity, um, they both kind of suck, but at least the Surface Pro has a USB port and a yeah. mini display port. You get a you get a lightning port on the on the iPad. Yeah, there's that picture you were talking about, Ken. That that's is a lot of surface. That's area. a lot of surface area for like that's the unrolled, if you will, twelve point nine inch, twelve point nine inch tablet. So uh, obviously a lot of difference in the uh, uh, in the iOS stuff. Like the operating systems that is the big point here. Windows is built for productivity. That is my workflow. Mm-hmm. iOS is built for consumption. Consuming. Yeah. Right. Um, and More for consuming. And, and yeah. Productivity is kind of being stapled on as it goes. It's way better than it was when I first got an iPad and the iPad 2 and the iPad Air and all that stuff. Um, but it's still it's still pretty far behind. It's, it's okay. It's okay for like single tasking productivity. Like if you're writing something <laughs> yeah. in Word. I right? actually like, I that's actually great. even put in the story that's like if you have trouble with like ADHD, <laughs> the iPad can help you because that's true. It's kind of it tries to keep you on it's, task. It's a lot of work to like switch applications and yeah. make sure you're not yeah. screwing anything I mean, up. So to, like it kind of focused like... me to to do one thing at a time. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe now, that's what I need. Now you, I, you do get side by side if you really need to be able to look at something while. It, while and iOS 11 will change all of this or a lot of it. It help. It'll help. It you more. know, like things like file surf system access is was missing, and I wanted to do this all on iOS 10 stuff that somebody buys and uses today. Yeah. Uh, and that may change in the fall. Uh, performance wise, the general consensus here as we go through Tablet Mark, uh, Web Expert Kraken, is that in CPU tests, the especially like single threaded loaded tests, the Core i5 was better. Uh, in multi-threaded, it was kind of a toss-up, maybe a slight edge to the six-core A10X. The GPU leaned in favor of the Apple part. The Intel integrated graphics kind of again shows its inferiority um, in 3D Mark and, and graph GFX Bench and stuff like that. Uh, but it's also interesting because, like on the Surface Pro, you're not really planning on doing the gaming, doing gaming, right? On the on the iPad. You're probably more likely to do gaming because of the app ecosystem. You know the fact that you can go to the play or the Play Store. You can go to the App Store and uh, download games very easily and run them, and you don't have to worry about Steam in the background or web apps or whatever. Um, so Intel doesn't probably lose very much by being behind in the GPU side, but it's definitely it's definitely a sticking point for them. And then battery life, uh, a pretty big difference. We got over 11 and a half hours of uh, usable Wi-Fi time on the iPad Pros, uh, and even though we only got we got seven hours, just over seven hours on the Surface Pro, which is actually really good for not just a tablet, but for even a whole laptop, right? Like an, a thin and light laptop. Um, it's kind of, again, that's another one of those things where just inherently the mobile first design of the A10X gets you to this, gets you to this conclusion. So, you know, overall, I kind of summarize this as for me, if somebody were asking my opinion on what they should buy, if you're if there's in any way a part of you that is like productivity based, you, you, it's just Windows. It's not even really the hardware that does it at this point. It's Windows um, makes a big enough difference, and the Intel performance is good in those areas that matter on productivity. It's shortened in, on performance on the, on the graphics side, but that's just less important for that particular workload. Because you're not buying a Surface Pro for gaming, and probably not buying an iPad Pro for gaming, uh, at least not gaming first. Um, and maybe in a year we, we can do this again and we look at um, whatever the new iPad Pro is uh, and with the, all the OS changes <laughs> the, and stuff. The new, 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 new. The iPad, iPad Pro 2018. Pro. Yeah. Uh, and it may be very different because I, in my time using the iPad Pros, especially the 10.5, 10.5 was my favorite of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked the combination of you know usability, battery life, size, portability. I just, there was enough stuff that I could, couldn't do on iOS that made it uh, a non-starter for like my only device. And if I have to carry my laptop and my iPad, kind of defeats the purpose of choosing one over the other, right? So yeah, there you go. 
Any thoughts from anybody on this one? I know I, I talked for too long on it probably, so. Well, it's big enough you're not likely to leave it behind on the airplane. I have not lost an iPad on an airplane, but I have no, only a Kindle, a Kindle DX, which was the big <laughs> Kindle. So maybe your argument doesn't mean a whole lot for me. I don't oh, know. sorry. I had more faith in you than I should have. That's fair. That's fair. Um, what else we got? Uh, so we got a lot of this is our AMD block. This is our weekly block of AMD news. And actually, actually, I want to go tweet this out here. Uh, it's time for our weekly at AMD <laughs> block on the at PC per podcast, PC per.com slash live. And that's not how you spell podcast, right? Uh, there we go. Now everybody knows we're for real. So let's talk about AMD and all the stuff AMD is doing. First of all, they released the uh, Crimson Relive driver today and update 17.7.2, which is not roll off the tongue in any incredibly sexy way. Uh, this is an iterative software release. This isn't kind of like their previous two huge yearly annual cadence releases. Um, they've done things like the Radeon settings is now all in the new user interface as opposed to partially in the old kind of crummy looking Catalyst Control Center stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. They've added changes to the Radeon Relive support, the the part of their driver that's integrated that does capture, streaming, sharing, that type of stuff. They've uh, doubled the bitrate maximum up to 100 megabits per second. You can now adjust like camera transparencies. Uh, you get notifications on how long you've been streaming and stuff like that. And you can even modify some uh, microphone controls, audio controls uh, from all within the interface, which is nice. Uh, Radeon Wattman now supports memory underclocking. Probably not necessary for gaming, so probably necessary for people who were doing mining. They wanted to get that out the door. And they also have the ability to do power state control. So you can actually disable specific DPM states on the GPU if you never want it to enter those. So you could have it always run at high hmm. performance. You could have it always run at low performance. Also something miners were doing. Also something miners were doing. So probably hmm. not a coincidence. Radeon Chill, which is the uh, ability for the driver to um, basically, I don't know how to describe this in, 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 in a handful of words. Radeon Chill lowers your frame rate when you're standing still to lower power consumption on the GPU and then instantaneously increases your frame rate when you start to move. And it did it. Based on like keyboard or it, it does was, it based it was, on input? Mm, yeah. Yes. Keyboard and mouse yeah. input. And it was yeah. like per game, like program. Correct. In per, to, profile yeah. per game. Yeah. And, and it still is, but now they've added a whole bunch of games um, for the year 2017. Let me see if I can scroll over there. You got stuff like so. Dota 2 and League of Legends were announced with the RX 580, but then you got the Division and Doom and For Honor, Battlefield One, Titanfall well, Two, well, it's, Rocket it, League. It's worth noting that Dota 2 didn't work in Vulcan mode. They added Vulcan and, now it does. and DX12 support. So I pr would presume oh. it would work now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So while, while Dota 2 worked, it was in DX9. Yeah. And so you're talking about, you know, these are, this is going to be a big slide, maybe not worth showing. Okay. Uh, League of Legends, you know, Dota 2, but maybe Battlefield 1. Look, DirectX 12, Battlefield 1, um, the average in their testing, in this particular test, went from 192 to 148 watts of power, right? And that's... You know, it's going to be very much based on what your testing scenario is, how much you're standing still, how much you're moving. If you're a sniper and you're sitting there uh, uh, camping in one spot for a long time, chances are you can really reduce your power consumption maybe. Yeah, but then your frame rate will be so low that when the guy goes to run across, you're just going to see we him. We can only hope. You're only going to see him I like bet, twice. I bet it doesn't go. I probably doesn't drop down to two frames or anything well, like you know, that. So yeah. Serves them right for camping. <laughs> See, there you go. It's the anti-camping technology. There oh, you go. Oh, man. Uh, they added frame rate target control for DX12 and multi-GPU. They added per-display color controls, which was apparently the number two voted feature by Radeon users that they wanted to see. Oh, man. I, I'm almost disappointed that this has arrived now that I you ended switched. up switching over. Apparently, from what they said, a lot of people were in that boat where they desperately wanted this capability. So, Well, because I've got a Huey, so I can do one monitor. But you can't match the other two to it. Yeah. With that oh. and an hour and a half and some OCD, I could do it. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing they've added is, is called Enhanced Sync. And um, this is somewhat similar to what NVIDIA did with Fast Sync, um, which was, I'm sorry, Tom, was a bad name. 
uh, for this product. Enhanced Sync basically does... Oh, man. Uh, I read this paper from Scott, and I talked to him today about it. So Enhanced Sync basically does... When you are above the maximum refresh rate of your display, if mm -hmm. you have a 60 hertz display, but you're running at 90 frames per second, your okay. GPU can run 90 frames per second. If you right. have VSync on, you would normally be capped at 60 frames, mm -hmm. and you would, and would be pushing. No, no, you, you would not necessarily. Oh, well, yeah, you wouldn't judder. You would uh, add lag. You would be adding input latency yeah. into the game. Yep. Right. So the idea behind, for enhanced sync is that basically it tells the game that it's always displaying every frame it renders so that the f game renders as fast as it can. Right. This is, by the way, the exact opposite of chill. The game <laughs> renders as fast as it can. Yeah, yeah. And what happens is when the screen is ready to do the next refresh cycle, the AMD driver takes the next full frame and displays it, or the most recent full frame and displays it so that you're always running at 60 hertz on your panel yeah. with no tearing. But wouldn't that give you judder? I don't think so. It's where you are in the game. Not so much judder, but things will transport across the screen. Well, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. but only in that the only thing you're missing is what would be showing up in torn frames. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. you have to, if you're going to have be V-Sync on, like, you have to get frames. judder if you're like unless it's matched perfectly, there's going to be judder in some matched way. Matched perfectly. Unless your frame no. FPS of the game is 60 and your display is 60 and you have V-Sync on, like that's the only time that you're going to mm. be judder free. No, no, uh, it's you're not going to get judder at all. No, you're you're so. just going to get larger changes in in time, pixel changes. So that's yeah. judder. No, you're still it's still being like all the animation that would have been shown. Yeah, doesn't get shown. Right, and it's the exact same thing that would be happening if you're running at sixty right, frames right. per second. But, but so unless, like the but judder unless is, but, the, is unless it always skips the exact same number of frames. You will get judder. Um, I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're talking. But in general, yes. Yeah. Like for sync on, like that's, that's no, no, no. But for enhanced sync, right? In general, you're going to be skipping the same number of frames, and right. if anything, it's but, going to change by one frame but, as you move up and down sure. that. But that you're range. not pushing back on the buffer, and you're not adding Correct. a bunch of input latency. Yeah, yeah. And so the the benefit yeah. is that you don't get screen tearing, and you have almost vsync like input latency. Yeah. Vsync off. Yeah. Like. Latency. Now, on the low side, it does something too, which is more complex. Um, where, if you go below, ugh, I don't even know how to explain this. Which uh, one is this one now? This, this is this is still enhanced sync, but basically, what it tries to do is it decreases the stutter when the frame rate is below the refresh rate. How does it do that? Um, so it does it by um, kind of doing the same type of thing. Uh huh. And it will make a concession to show a tear if the drop is too severe. Oh, okay. Like, basically, it has some, and, and I don't really have an answer to this yet, there's either some heuristic where it's keeping track of things to kind of track the vector of how the frame rate is changing, or it's just doing a simple IFTT, you know, yeah, yeah. algorithm on it, um, where it's somewhere around, like, once you get below 60% of your refresh rate, that's going to start to enable tearing as you go in and out of yeah, it. Yeah, because if you were below the refresh rate, usually what would happen is you would just repeat the last frame. Correct. But yeah. maybe if it's like, maybe if it starts repeating the last frame, but then like 10% into it or something, it's like, hey, I've got the next one. Like right. It's, it's ready. It may just be like, like it may make a, a decision of, well... Yeah, it's like <clears> most of it, the but frame... But if it does it at... 60% in, it may go, no, it's too late. Right. We're going to wait. Yeah. Yeah. That, that could I, be I part could of see it. that. I could see that. Um, so, this so is something why don't you just try. turn off VSync if you're that concerned about it? Well, it would because give you more. It then would you be, get tearing. It would be less frequent tearing or like, oh. you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's it's, like, it would be, yeah. It's, the goal is not that below the refresh rate, you get no tearing. It's less frequent tearing. Yeah. Um, and then above it, well, and you, you don't you, tear. You're not going to have several mini frames in one shot. With not v you you're going to get... You will at most have one tear. One tear yeah. throughout the entire screen. Yeah. 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 That's true. Uh, so that's in here. We'll, we'll mess around with it and see what, see what we see. Uh, and that will work on Vega and RX 400 and 500. Uh, they does have it, a beta testing program. They have a new GPO that, profiler for developers to use. Hold Go on. Ahead. Does any of that other enhanced sync stuff kick in when you have a free sync panel and you're above yes. or below? 
FreeSync. Uh, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Huh. Uh, it works with FreeSync. You can enable it with FreeSync, which basically means normally with the FreeSync monitor, if you're above the refresh rate, uh -huh. you're in a VSync on state. If you have it, you can pick, right? Yes. Like you can now choose. Now you can pick enhanced and it will behave the same way. Which will give you lower latency, but still have no tearing. Yes. Which is good. Correct. Correct. That's great. Yeah. Which, That's, is that, does that, NVIDIA side even do that? Correct? Yeah. You Currently? can use FastSync with okay. G-Sync. Yeah. Um, and then for FreeSync on the bottom side, if your mm. monitor supports LFC, then you don't have to worry about it ever. Right. Yeah. You, but I think there's a limit to how. Uh, I th well, I don't know, but I think it's really low. Yeah. It's, and, it's and at really that low. point, enhanced sync's not going to make that big a difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. If your monitor doesn't have LFC support, then Enhanced Sync will apply and kind of do the same thing that you're doing uh, with with standard refresh rate monitors. So, cool little features. Um, we'll do some testing with that. I'm I'm really really interested to see if there's other stuff in this software. Uh, this the. Somebody was asking, somebody said that they heard this driver added three or four percent to Vega FE. This doesn't have Vega FE device IDs in it, so I don't really know where they got that from. Um, but but it was on the internet. Right, exactly. Uh, and so, nobody is allowed to lie on the internet. No, no. So we'll, I, I'm curious to see what what kind of opens up with uh, the Vega driver. If there's other enhancements to kind of to kind of uh, uh, go along with this. Um, what do we got here? All right, we've got a couple of new patrons before we get into our next AMD story. Oh, we got a handful. All right, Justin easily Ooh. edited their pledge from five dollars to six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Mm. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Pure Havoc, Thank you. second mention today, uh, upped his current pledge from 3 to $5, so he's uh, getting full use out of this one. Thank you, Pure Havoc. Um, would you compare the user experience of the Wacom 32 UHD monitor that comes, just edited their pledge from 5 to 666? To be sure, to be fair, his name is all one word. Would you compare the user experience of the Wacom 32 <laughs> UHD monitor that comes... <laughs> And I guess he ran out of characters yeah. at that point. Yes. I'd like to make a collect call. And I don't know that that's fair. <laughs> I'd like to make a collect call from, uh, is... We got a baby, it's a boy. Well, that's not really... I was just going to do that. <laughs> uh, and a new pledge from Anthony Abel uh, for $5. Oh. Thank you, nice. Anthony. Thank you, everybody, for the support. All right. Other AMD news. They reported Q2 results, Josh. How many Did dollars... Did they now? Did they make... How many dollars? One point two two billion of what, what, dollars. Is that is that good? Is that bad? That's pretty good. It's a uh, what twenty seven percent increase from their previous quarter. Their last one was a sub one billion dollars. Now, if you look back at AMD <clears throat> when they had the foundry around two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand six, they were making about one point five to one point six billion dollars a quarter. And that was before graphics. And and then they got graphics and things started to kind of slow down. The Phenom 2 was not as competitive, but we hadn't seen the bad parts yet. We didn't see Bulldozer and that rabbit hole. And uh, finally, in Q1 of this year, they made something like $992 million. So you take a what, 33% drop in revenue with a company that is larger than it was before due to ADI, ATI. But, you know, then again, they, they did get, around, get rid of the foundry portion to Global Foundries. Um, they just weren't making much money. Mm -hmm. Last three years, their CPU, GPU group has had negative operating revenue. Is that correct? Income. Anyway, uh, income, operating income. Um, and that's that's kind of hard because that's the bread and butter of AMD. Yeah, they've, they've got the semi-custom and the server, which is kind of grouped together. And semi-custom has been keeping them afloat nicely. Mm -hmm. But it's semi-custom is, is, is really a seasonal, and you are at the whim of the guys making the semi-custom orders, namely Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. And so when they're looking forward to Q1 and Q2 of that year and they say, you know what, we don't need any more of these CPU, GPU things. We're just not going to, you know, make any more and you're not going to get any royalties. Things kind of go to hell. 
But Q2 was really important, obviously, because that is the first full quarter of Ryzen revenue. Mm-hmm. And it made a direct and positive impact on the company. Not only that, but their refresh of the RX series, the RX 500 series, which you can criticize that as much as you want about how close it is to the RX 400 series. It doesn't matter because they damn near have sold out of everything due to mining and people just wanting to upgrade GPUs. So in between these two things, they saw something like a 57% increase in the CPU GPU revenue from last year just alone. And so it's 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 a pretty big deal. They lost 16 million this quarter. And a lot of that was due to a lot of the uh, kind of employment packages and and um, uh, stock options. What is that sound back there? I don't know. Is somebody laughing? No. No. <laughs> We'll let you know if somebody kids. sneaks in behind you. <laughs> Please let me know because well, it'll be you late though because I just want to see what happens. Probably, yeah, yeah. Uh, just good humor and fun <laughs> times. But anyway, uh, when all those things come together, uh, graphics, CPU, Ryzen, chipsets, uh, they they. You know, even though they lost 16 million due to a lot of that, if they went to non-GAAP uh, type accounting, which doesn't include stock options, paying off people that are going away, whatever, uh, they made 25 million, and that's that's profit. This is one of their first ones that they've had in quite some time. It's a big deal. So 1.22 billion is nice, but their guidance for next quarter is up another something like 23%. So they're expecting another $1.5 billion quarter, which they have not seen in ages, Mm. since at least they had their foundries, and uh, those were kind of, you know, running underneath uh, the company. So this is is a huge turnaround from AMD. I, you know, and the first full quarter of Ryzen... Uh, they'll have, you know, next quarter, um, we'll be talking about Threadripper edition. We'll be talking about Vega edition. We'll be talking about Mo- uh, Ryzen 3 edition. Ryzen, Ryzen Pro. Ryzen Pro. Uh, yeah, I think so. Ryzen Pro yeah. will probably be shipping by then. Um, yeah. So, Q4 is probably going to be the mobile Ryzen stuff, yep. their APU. They're not going to have desktop APU yet, as far as from what I understand. I think but if, then, if Robert if yeah, Robert's got, still in the chat, I want him to remind me what the specific number of product launches that are occurring this year. He I've, bailed on us. Oh, he left? Okay. That number was floating around, though, recently. Well, from me, probably. Yeah. Because I, I, I was talking to... to some of their guys about like, you know, last in 2016, we did five product launches as a company. And in 2017, I think it was like, it's, it was going to be 18 or 22 yeah. or something like that. Some huge amount. Sure. feels like it. As a person who just, I just, I mean, there's, oh, I bet half of those boxes stacked in that corner are AMD centric stuff. Yep. Right. So, all right. Uh, earnings. They're good. Let's talk about something way more important though. Processor packaging. Mm-hmm. AMD we like mean like packages. UGA versus LGA versus. Oh no, sir. No oh. boxes. Big packages. Uh, AMD boxes. teased the Ryzen Threadripper packaging um, by posting these two pictures on social media. This one right here that as the Ryzen Threadripper package, uh, it looks like it's got like a styrofoam border around it and the eye of Sauron in the middle. So mm-hmm. It looks like it's staring you down. It does. It's it's like, uh, it reminds me of, uh, what's that, the Jurassic Park where like the Transformers Rex looks in the window with his one eyeball <laughs> while the well, kid's shining the light on it. You set that down on the table in front of you and there's a little thing that activates and it says, you are not worthy. And yeah. then it stares you down. If mm. you look in the middle uh, behind the Z, the processor is there. Yeah. So the CPU is inside this thing. It's like somewhere. hovering in the middle. Um, it's not big enough for a cooler. People who are thinking that there was like a water cooler embedded in this are, are kind of nuts. No. Unless maybe you take the processor out, they tell you to fill it with water, and now the whole thing becomes the, the hey, radiator. Yeah, liquid and cooling. The, yeah. Yeah. I think, that's, I think that's how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for a little bit of scale, this is CEO Lisa Sue holding the Threadripper packaging. 
And actually, in this picture, you get a uh, a sense of like it's not like this. You kind of look like it could be uh, an inch or two thick, right? Here, it's 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 a deep package, right? Like there's yeah. a lot of space in there for stuff, I guess, and things and, and well, we stuff. thought they were going to include a bracket for like other water cores, right? That's the rumor going around that they're going to have brackets in there. I, I don't know, or maybe the coolers will have to have it because it's a new. Isn't it a new? thread spacing or whatever mm -hmm. it for is. yeah tr4 is a new thread spacing so somebody has to answer that yeah um as far as i know there ha nobody's been selling or talking about like tr4 kits to buy on corsair or anything like that right ken like that's not like a thing we've seen i haven't seen any, any there that was yet. that knock to us showing off we've gotten till giant early. prototypes at computex but. oh yeah we've gotten to early mid august to get that figure out so plenty of time guys plenty of time yeah um there's not much else to say about this other than I think it looks cool. Uh, Ken did not like it, but he has since come around. Yeah, right. Whatever. Um, I think it's cool. It to me, you know, people have a, have kind of called it that it looks like uh, an old time portable TV box with like 9D batteries in the back. Looks or, like a Mac yes, Classic. Yes, it does. So how long a do Mac we get classic? before? How long do we get until someone does a system build inside one of those? Uh, uh, not long, but it definitely won't be a Threadripper no, system. No, it will not be a Threadripper <laughs> system. <laughs> raspberry Pi, done. Yeah, res like, yeah, 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 exactly. You put a you put a Raspberry Pi in there, uh, and you have you know display output and stuff. Yeah, that could be. That's actually kind of neat. Just have right. it looping that that section of Lord of the Rings that shows the eye of Sauron. Yeah, you could, just, people you know. would put a screen. Yeah. where that yeah. is right. Exactly. We could probably yeah. do that. Right, get a get a, uh, yeah. a one by one screen and kind of mat mat it in there. I can see that happening. Yeah. I'd be more impressed if someone turns it into a ring box. We've got that extra set over there needing stuff. That would be a good project for somebody who's not us. Mm. <laughs> to mm. do and then send to me is what I mean. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, that's that's clearly what we're talking about here. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Not much more to read into this other than it's clear by looking at this immediately that they spent a lot of time on it. Yeah. They're very proud of this product. Yeah. Um, they understand the importance of this product, of having that flagship processor. Uh, I, I mean, it's a CPU. There's only so much aesthetic you could put into the CPU true. itself, right? So, yeah, yeah. so put some in the packaging, right? For I, their GPUs, like the, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the Vegas the, the Vega great. Frontier Edition is a, is a great looking card yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, okay, you know what, you know what I'm, I am most impressed of? Thinking of Threadripper and Epic and their highest clock speeds because they do not have monolithic dies seems like they could have really improved well i mean they have the ability to get really granular with the amount of power delivered to each of the different dies yeah and so yeah they're able to achieve these you know the same base and boost clock speeds as the individual risens at the top end that's just neat stuff mm. flexibility is yeah. it's a nice thing I, I can't touch my toes but it's a nice thing I'm sure there are some people inside Intel who are like scratching their heads of why they didn't do a cool like packaging marketing thing with any of their HEDT yeah, parts. Because they've, I mean, because they've using, using glue on Doritos is no fun, they yeah. think. Like, what does Intel's, you know, $1,000 or $1,500 CPU come in? <laughs> a is cardboard, just, like just a, a thin cardboard, cardboard box. box. It's like a brown box? It looks no, like no, a box you throw away because you're using your computer. Oh, it's just the blue box. Yeah, yeah and there's I think the core, the core i9, the X series is black box. Yeah. But it, I mean it's just a box. At the end so. of the day, it's just the box thing came in, so like, yeah. Indeed. But but this will be on a shelf. Yeah. But chances are if you spend $1,000 on a core i9, you're also going to put that on the shelf even if it doesn't look as good. <laughs> that's True. just that's just that's just the mentality I have. Uh, also, so we've talked about AMD's big things in their packaging. Let's talk about their small things in their packages. In their packages. I mean, um Jeremy, what was this story over at the Inquirer about? Uh, uh, Mark Papermaster, their CTO for AMD, did a talk uh, sort of discussing how AMD is going to be moving towards a 7 nanometer node and uh, how they're not going to be immediately jumping into that uh, because, well, it's a small company. Everyone's sort of working on the same stuff at the same time. Mm. So they've got to find ways that they can shrink stuff that, is going to work across the entire product line. And so part of what he got into is what he was calling uh, two and a half D chip stacks, which is essentially describing uh, the way that they're leveraging interposers right now, uh, especially on uh, Threadripper, but on some of the other platforms as well. And uh, I mean, even HBM sort of ties into that where you can get smaller features, more densely packed, 
without having to completely switch to EUV immediately to get down to seven nanometer. So it's it's an interesting uh, little talk. Uh, the whole video isn't available through that link, but I'm sure if you dig around, you can find it. Josh might have even watched it. I don't know. I didn't watch it, but I I read about it. He didn't and watch it, seven but he nanometer plays one on TV. What's that? Play one on TV. Sure, why Never not? Um, He's doing that right now. Get, here's here's the problem with seven nanometer. <clears throat> You got different guys with different uh, definitions of what seven nanometer is, right. and so Global Foundries they've got one definition. TSMC's got another. Uh, TSMC apparently is quite close to their seven nanometer implementation, but we have no idea what that compares to in terms of actual dimensions and performance as compared to what Intel's ten nanometer is or what Global Foundries seven nanometers and Samsung. So you got to take a lot of this with a grain of salt. Mm-hmm. But what we do know is, is that they've got to do like quad patterning on these. And that makes design a whole lot more interesting. And by interesting, I mean really stinking hard. Yeah. So it's, yeah, there's, there's no doubt that, um, you know, you, you can have some simple chips going on seven nanometer and doing some test stuff, um, you know, today. But... Doing anything really complex, it takes a lot of design work. It takes a lot of, of, of development. It takes a ton of money going in between these guys, um, Global Foundries, TSMC, whoever, and, and the people who design these ASICs. It's just so much development. You remember back in the day when uh, – oh, well, what uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it may have been – Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 130 nanometer. Okay. Where they had the vias that would just disconnect, that they'd have voids in there when you started applying electricity and current through these That's these like these idea. voids would migrate and they would actually disconnect portions of the chip. Nice. And they would just stop working. Huh. And the stuff that we're dealing with now makes that look like child's play. So it's, uh, you know, it's fascinating stuff. And it's, it's no wonder why new fabs and any kind of new process technology literally takes billions of dollars to create. Hmm. But it's worth it in the end because we're talking, you know, ARM is, is planning on shipping, what, a billion chips this next year? That seems like a lot. Yeah, it's a time. Yeah, not for so, ARM. And I mean, IoT... PCs, tablets, cell phones, everything we have requires these chips, and you're just producing a ton of them the faster you can get to these lower processes for these bigger parts. Right. The more you're going to sell, and everybody's happy. But boy, the cost of getting there is impressive. That's not me paying for it. Uh, no. We Before we move on, we do have two more patron uh, things to land on here. Speaking pure, of paying for it. Pure havoc, indeed edited his pledge from five dollars now to twenty dollars so uh pure havoc that's your he's, third it's his third mention but he's three five now 20 that's great um he's playing havoc with your bottom line he is that's fine if he wants to go higher that's as fine as he keeps going up uh <laughs> you gotta you gotta at least be in there for a full month though you got i gotta get you in there for a full month at this rate don't don't back out on me now and then uh david edited their pledge from five to 699 as well Six ninety nine. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't it incredible? And thank you. Uh, all right. Build your own water cooling loop with the EKWB L three hundred and sixty kit. Jeremy, you wrote this up. This is a story over at Modders Inc. What was uh, interesting about this? Uh, I mean, overall, it was just more or less a decent uh, water cooling kit. Not an all your not not an, eh, not an all in one, but one that you've got to do yourself. But the one nice thing that they did about it, which uh, Modders Inc. didn't get actually get a chance to test, was you can add a GPU cooler to this loop, and mm. they've actually got a pump strong enough that you can add a second radiator to it. So that that makes it you know a little bit more interesting than your average water cooling kit, because gotcha. most of them, I mean, the head pressure is not good enough that you can do two radiators. This one they're saying no. 
if you're going to do a GPU kit, uh, first, we'll happily sell you one. And second off, toss a second uh, 360 mil radiator on there, and it's still going to run perfectly well. Mm. So apart from that, I mean, EKWB has been around for a very long time for water it's cooling. True. So you, you've got a good idea what the quality is going to be from them. Yeah. Uh, apparently it was like 1999 when they kicked off. And if you were water cooling in 1999, ooh, let me tell you, you were edgy. <laughs> Uh, we also have a new challenge on the SSD world, the Toshiba XG5, which is a M.2 NVMe storage SSD thing. Yeah. yeah. It is a storage thing. It's using their, uh, there's the some new chips on it. And it's just some chips on it. Well, inside those chips is the new, uh, it's a Bix three, um, lighter. No, no, not a lighter, <laughs> uh, 64 layer. A big switch. <laughs> so it's a uh, Toshiba's. Uh, you know, like 3D NAND. Okay, all right. right. 64 all right. layer NAND. Um, and you know, I mean, the NAND pretty much determines, in a large degree, how fast an SSD goes. As far as like, usually the flash is the limitation on your write speeds and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Um, the controller is also, you know, a, an issue. Like, depending on you know, slower SSDs, sometimes the firmware is not that great on the controller or whatnot. But um, XG5 looks uh, pretty strong, actually. Um, so uh, Jeremy put the article up uh, pointing to the tech report review. Um, we have an XG5. We've done all the testing on it. Just the review's not live yet, but um, results look really good. Um, and uh, I agree with uh, tech reports results as far as like our results match up, right? Like it's, it's pretty close. Not quite a 960 Pro or Evo, but it's close. Damn close. Yeah. Um, and it's close even in our like mixed workload tests and like you know we have some tests that kind of even put driver under under even more stress mm. than like typical reviews do right right um still looks good uh even in those tests um mm. and uh another thing that looks really good on it is uh our trim speed results which previous uh occ slash toshiba drives have done very badly on like when you issue trim commands or you delete files, right. like the right. drives will hiccup and stutter and stuff like that. Um, uh, the XG5 actually uh, is doing better than squeaky, Samsung squeaky. drives in some respects gotcha. on those tests. So like, you know, nipping at its heels and in some places, uh, you know, beating it. So interesting. It's good stuff. Mm. Uh, however, you can't buy the drive. It's an OEM drive. It's an OEM only drive. Now, yep. now realize. Can you buy it like aftermarket type of thing? I mean, you might. It'll. I'm sure it'll pop up on the aftermarket, but like it's not a retail product. It's meant to only be you know in OEM mm -hmm. devices. Um, now, granted, Toshiba usually has the OEM part, and then at some point in the future, hopefully, they'll be the same exact part, just you know rebranded re under OCZ right. as a retail part, right? So it'll probably show up as a Revo drive something. Right, like an R, you know, there was an RD four hundred. Maybe this would be like an RD five hundred or something. Um, okay, you know, and once that happens, if it happens, then you can, then you can more easily obtain it. I think, you know, I was recommending to them right off the bat, like they should be also producing it as a retail drive if it performs well, and it performs well. So it's silly to have something that's like a great performer out there, but you know, power users and enthusiasts would have to go find some laptop that had it in it and then take it out and put it in their desktop. That'd be kind of silly. <laughs> Right, totally worth it. And it's not yeah. like your OWC back in the day when you owned all the Apple stuff. Yeah. All right. Pure Havoc bumped up to thirty dollars. He's digging a hole no way. of positivity. He's really man <laughs> for our website. He's going for a record. Listen, you've already beat the record on how many times somebody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Got mentioned per episode. That, that record that's was true. like one. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> so <laughs> maybe two, maybe two. <laughs> He'll drop it down to a buck after the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you'll get a negative Rinse repeat. Next well, no, he week. should do it during the show, so you have to announce it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Asus unveils flagship X370 ROG Crosshair Six Extreme. This is an AM4 board for your Ryzen Seven Five Three, I guess, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so this is a, a pretty high-end board. It's an EATX motherboard, so you know that means you're going to have a serious amount of crap on it. Um, 
<laughs> sorry, 12 phase <laughs> Digi Plus VRM, uh, a whole bunch of expansion and storage slots, including uh, dual PCIe 3 by 16 a uh, three, you know, by ones, two M.2 slots, eight SATA ports. So is that uh, LED lighting on the back or is that just their effect? Yes. It looks like LED lighting on the back. It uh, is. And not it's... only that, but look at that ATX power connection. It's right it's angled. on its side. People have asked yeah. for that for a while. And yeah. I think that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, but I forget. I, mean, I think I asked somebody once. It was probably JJ why they didn't do that. And there was something about. It's easy to pry off. Do you, do you notice how power. deep that is and how many connections it yeah. likely has so that you yeah. can't pry it off? <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. that a bet? Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have JJ send you one and you can have the ATX challenge. Yeah. Where do I shove my Threadripper processor, though? Uh, anyway, you got to snap okay. it in half first. You put yeah. it in one of the Spy 16 You got to get slots. a C clamp. <laughs> And a lot of solder. Yeah. Uh, it has the body thing has 16 fan headers. Well, what? really? What? 13 of them are on the board. There's a, another three you get with an add-in card. <laughs> In case wait, you wait, wait, wait. That's got to that's gotta be reversed. No. Really? Why would you have an added board to give you three you when you already have 13? Yeah. It you doesn't make two sense. Two rooms of four right close to each other so huh. that you can actually do your rad uh, properly. Right, so everything Enhance. is going towards uh, one little spot for your radiators, and yes. uh, yes. Okay. there's a the block of them. Just sort of go up. like look at them; They're, it's insane. There's a whole block of yeah, them. There's a whole block on the wow. bottom. Wow! Yeah. So they put them in the places where you'd want them if you had like a rad there's up top there. and a rad down below, mm. and that's cool. All yeah. Right. All no, right. I, I, that was the one thing I took away from this. Where I'm like, holy shit, that's insane! But you did it very well. Huh. I just, I just don't get the add-in only giving you three more. Yeah, why does the add well, you need more point. than 13? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, know. I guess. I think some... that's more of a there's something sh uh, there's a cable that's too short or there's something I got to do that just needs an extra 3 cuz <laughs> I mean an extra 360 mil radiator only needs 3 pins, right? Or well, 3 headers. Good yeah. lord, it's got the ESS Saber DAC attached to the uh the audio. That's that's a pretty high end Unit. Well, they didn't know. screw around with this board. How much is this board? No, they did not. Do we know? They didn't it's not say. Be cheap. Uh, let's see. It's going to be over three hundred bucks. Uh, one of those yeah, fifty the, bucks. The, the Crosshair Six Hero, which is the is, is a step down, is two hundred forty-five or two hundred seventy if you get it with the AC Wi-Fi. Yeah. So another hundred bucks one's over about that. Three fifty. Yeah. yeah. Hey, a lot of money for for AMD. Like it's just great to see. Even even though we know these are low volume parts, like these types of parts for AMD, they systems need to exist. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, all right, uh, one more news post before we get to our picks. This is another USB standard that I don't know anything about. Jeremy, what in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I am really, really looking forward to now typing out in every laptop review USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type C. USB 3.2. Gen 1 Type-C. Hmm. Yes, and I'm assuming the Gen 1 because we've already got USB 3.1 Gen 1 and Gen 2. Uh, some are Type-C, some are not. Why didn't they just call it Gen In 3? In this case, thankfully, they're all going to be Type-C. Huh. So we've at least got that out of the way. What will I do with my printer, though? <laughs> uh, you'll throw it out and beat it with a baseball bat like you should. Because yes. Because that's yes. what printers deserve. Correct. So the, the big trick with this is that they have doubled uh, the transfer from 10 gigabits to 20 gigabits. And they've done that by allowing USB to take pair, take over all four wire pairs. Because before they only just did the two. Thunderbolt would use the four, DisplayPort would use the four, but USB suck itself down to the two. <laughs> so by opening it up for everything, boom, you can now hit uh, 20 gigabits. I couldn't... It's a gigabit. I didn't... Uh, I, yeah, blah, blah. I didn't have enough time <laughs> to check out uh, if it still is able to deliver power if you're using uh, data for it. My assumption I is yeah, I, mean, I would I'm assume. sure it would. Yeah. You ought to remove those features they've added. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's hard to remove, but so now we've got if another they, if they, USB stick. If standard. they made one that didn't have power, it'd probably be USB 3.05. Right, that way you know it's a regression from 3.1, and it let's has have another power. one. Yeah, 
3.05 is basically the same data but with no power. Yeah. Nice. You probably can't do 20 gigabit gigabits i almost screwed up and said like jeremy uh and power <laughs> a- and power because if you're using all of the wire pairs yeah that's why i'm thinking they've got all oh, four you wires can't do 20 know. gigabits and display or and power but you can I don't, do I don't 20 think gigabits i don't think they would use a wire pair a, da- a power pair for they're data saying they're using all four pairs which I guess. implies yeah i don't know there are only four golden fingers in there no, no, there's <laughs> there's more than that. Uh, all right, before we get into our hardware software picks of the week, two Patreon Patreon notes here. Raw Banana just pledged three dollars. Thank you, Raw Banana, and Pure Havoc comes in again at fifty dollars, going from thirty to fifty dollars. Pure Havoc. Uh, doing great things, supporting supporting us and uh, and this this wonderful show. I mean, clearly this must be the best episode of the podcast we've ever we're, done. We're be, I, I, I think we can make it to 100. Do you think we can we're make it be, to 100? <laughs> Listen, we're going to be checking the Patreon specifically for this guy. Oh, pure, oh yeah, for sure. No, I get email notifications on all yeah, this stuff. Okay. So. So do we need to like open up in lower third and have like you know sponsored by? We need a new. Uh, That's true. There you go. There's there's our so new there level. So you go. If you for a hundred bucks a month. This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to you by yeah. a yeah. Yeah. dude. Pure Havoc. Dude name. Oh, you said you can't say it. Could it. Be him. Now they can now they can capture our voices it could and be him. synthesize it back into place. Yeah, they just cut it together exactly. and they already did got it for Oh darn. They can put it on their trophy case of audio files. Uh, yes. let's move into uh, <laughs> our hardware software picks of the week. Uh, up first is me and my selection is a uh, device that uh, we've needed for a while around here, and as it turns out, uh, and we just got one in. This is the Tech. It's just Tech Orbits. I don't know what that brand means. Well, yeah, but it's deprecated. I mean, it's only three point one, man. Yeah, oh, it's already God, it's already out of right. date. It's out of date. Gotta already. get another one. This is a USB three point one Type C uh, and Thunderbolt port compatible converter to Display Port full size display port. It's basically if you have a USB type C port on your laptop, you can convert it to display port, hook it up to a laptop or to a laptop, to a monitor uh, that way. Um, is this an active No. No, it's all passive because display port a... comes through USB 3.1. Okay. Which, which is why this cable and Thunderbolt. Well, it's on sale, but which is why it's $7. Yeah, I think that, that's pretty I mean, cheap. I think that's all I paid was $7. Yeah. For it as well. So, it's one of those things that when you need it you need it, yeah. and you can't really cobble and anything else together. We have a specific need for it because we get a lot of devices in here that we're always testing and, and trying to check out. You no. wouldn't need this out there until you buy a laptop or device that has USB 3.1 Type-C. Like yeah. if, you, if you have a desktop motherboard with Type-C, you really don't need this because you're going to have a graphics card in well, it, and you're going to well, attach even, your monitors there. But you're not even guaranteed that it will pass it on a desktop system. That's true. Right? Like, uh, if it's Thunderbolt, it will. Right. Uh, and if it's USB 3.1, it doesn't. Have it doesn't, to. doesn't have to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So just you caution for those yeah, yeah. that you know again, have a desktop you system. You wouldn't and go, need it. Um, I can plug in have that a all of, our, all of our new, all of our new Dell laptops at work have the C connection. Yeah, that go to the uh, the the brick that mm-hmm. has all the video outputs. Yeah, yeah. and the power. Dock. Do you like those? So, yeah, uh, they're handy, mm-hmm. but. They've got a couple of little bugs. Yeah, yeah we have one of the yeah, Dell starting to play with that too. Docks in. I'm not a big fan. It's really? not been a seamless experience. <laughs> well, the HDMI yeah. port on one of ours keeps flash. Well, multiple of ours keeps just flashing on the dock. Oh, like so, the screen image is flashing. Yeah. Correct. Mm, that's Did you get the new driver? New driver, new <laughs> firmware. Yeah, no. lovely. Have Ooh, you shit. tried turning it off and back on again? I, I have once or twice. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I'm about to pick one of those up in the coming weeks to test out for work, and I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, it'll be great for you. I'm oh, sure I'll deal with it. Maybe fix for users. Them. I'm worried about. All it, right. It hurts my eyes. Uh, <laughs> up next is Jeremy. And did you just pay, send me to a landing page? He did. Well, no, it's a deal page. Oh, okay. What do we got? Roswell, Roswell is having Roswell. a deal for some reason. Uh, yes, Roswell. It's all UFOs. Uh, <laughs> there are some decent deals on power supplies, uh, some coolers. But hey, you know what else Roswell makes? Cookers. 
Ooh, I can start my own Facebook cooking or show. Or a halogen convection oven. It, it It's all freaking on sale. It's an induction uh, And a wireless N150 Wi-Fi adapter. Oilless low-fat air fryer. Induction no cooking I'm telling you. Are expensive usually. Although that's just a yeah, single. But 80 like, bucks. That's Canadian. what all of the like YouTube people and the Facebook people use for the direct down shot where they're doing the cooking and you find yeah, it. And it's, exactly. What are we talking yeah. about? Induction. So it's it's 80 bucks Induction Canadian. For, I mean, if you want me yeah. to buy some and send them this, down. This uh, that's only like no, 60 that, bucks. That, that thing. Do they have any rice cookers? That sounds like something Rose Will <laughs> might make. Uh, they got a pressure cooker yet? There's an air fryer. No. Is this different than the top of my stove? It's just one of them. It's just one no. external. You don't have well, an induction. No, stove. you don't have induction. You have uh, electric. Just yeah, it's just it's just. So that's you, the kind that you can have top. the pot boiling and then mm -hmm. take it off and lick it. That's and it an actual. Burn your tongue. It's an actual induction coil. It's like wireless uh, charging. Yeah. Except, yeah. except. So I can put my phone on it. Except, yes. yes. <laughs> put your phone on that 1.8 kilowatt. Uh, it'll charge it in three seconds. But the problem is. The fourth, the fourth It'll second is the problem. <laughs> oh, so you got to be quick about yeah, removal. Be really yeah. quick. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. All right. I'll pay attention. I mean, if it's only three seconds, I feel like my attention span won't be, won't be off the fourth like that. Is, you can scramble an egg on. It's got five pre-programmed settings: hot pot, stir fry, fry, warm milk, and soup. And see, there's no charge. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Polished A-grade crystal plate surface. You know it. Up to 18 So I clicked watts. on that just to see, okay, maybe there's a power supply deal. And then I was reading through it and I go, okay, nice. this is nice. just too funny not to do. Yeah. All right. All right. And besides, some of these cookers are freaking awesome. Like the air fryers are impressive. Yep. All right. Uh, what do we got up next? Josh. I don't know. What do we have? You got next. a monitor? I do. You know, I've been looking at this, and then it came on special, and I was thinking in front of the wife. She's got a 25-inch right now. It's a 29, even though it's the same, you know, 25 by 1080 screen. It's FreeSync, IPS. Gosh. And it's 20 bucks off. So it's, what, 249 minus 20. So 229 for a pretty nice adjustable screen that's, that's going to be... Good for a lot of different folks. I'm I'm just nice. I need to win the lottery so I can just buy more of these things. Everybody needs to win the lottery for a lot of reasons. We all do. It's true. If they would just give us all the money, it would be fine. Give us the monies. It would. Yeah. Alan. Hey, so uh cheap hard drives. Really cheap hard drives. If you're willing to do surgery, ten cents a gigabyte. If you want to do some, it's it's it should almost, be well below ten cents a gigabyte. Uh, okay, so the math on this deal comes to two cents per gigabyte. Oh shit, that's two five times less expensive than SSDs should be. Than Ryan's than, than what they should be. So uh, okay, so there is a drive called a Western Digital Easy Store. I believe it's only sold through Best Buy. Um, eight terabyte drive. I think the I think you're right. I think the Easy Store brand is Easy only Store Best Buy. is. I think it's a specific Best Buy like. Specific uh, yeah. branding thing. Um, they're normally like 300 bucks. Inside these drives, now this is subject to change. However, I currently. don't think it's going to change anytime soon. And currently, um, what's inside these is an 8 terabyte red. And I don't mean a white label drive, like their actual red, like it's a red label drive with the regular product number, mm -hmm. like model number of mm -hmm. a Western Digital Red. So you um, mean later than air? As a matter of fact, uh, it's actually a newer skew of the red. In other words, it is, oh. in other words, it is the the body, the newer body style and newer electronics that are present in the 10 terabyte um, HE10 and uh, oh yeah, there you go. The that, red that, 10 terabyte. That's the yeah the newer body style. So in other words, it's like the label looks a little different. Uh, you know, the face is more like square. Looks uh, like a hard drive. It, it, it looks, it looks like a hard drive. Some of the yeah, edges off. It's a slightly different um, form factor of the drive. Basically, it's just a newer revision to the hardware, right? Um, you know, so if you're going to buy hard drives, you might as well get the newest version. You have to shuck them. You, 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 you do have to. You, you do have to. It doesn't void the warranty. You sure? Yeah. Because anybody that does data recovery on these things, they have to shuck them to do data recovery before they do, you know, attempt to do their return. Right. So it's like okay. So you know, don't break the enclosure. If you take the serial number of this drive mm -hmm. that's written on the label mm -hmm. and you type it in, mm -hmm. like it's just 
That's it. You can just RMA it that way. You can RMA it that okay. way. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so 160 bucks. These drives, like, you know, look up an eight terabyte red. They're, like they're they, 270, I think. Is that right, Jim? Didn't we see they 260? They, they were over they 300, were over 300 and now they're on sale for like 270. Yeah. They're down to 270. Yeah. So you're still saving like 120 bucks, 100 bucks per drive. Yeah. That's, that's because six meg cash version is probably going to hit the channel for the bare drive, and it will be the higher cost, right? So because the ones right. that are on sale for two seventy, the old are the one twenty eight meg. meg. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Now and we like we have noticed there is the mix of the one hundred twenty eight meg and the two fifty six meg in the channel for the external drives currently. Okay. Yeah. So some more points on that. If you order these online, I think they limit you to two. Uh, I got three last time. That was last time. Okay. So now they're more limiting online. However, in store, and I verified this myself because we just bought a few because we're going to be building an array for the office at some point here. Um, but in the store, on the placard, and even the fact that I bought four of them from a store, like there is, does not appear to be a limit for an in store. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, it's two online. So if you walk in the store and there's just a shelf full of them, and in my case, like I went, I hit a couple and of stores. And also, here. you happen to need. Huh. 13 hard drives well, at any given point <laughs> in your life. The stores tend to not like... Well, we're talking about Alan here. They're so, so cheap, Yeah, though. he does. The stores tend to not stock like that many, but like I saw like eight or nine of them on the shelf at the store. Here in Florence? Uh, there was like six on the one on here in Florence. And then, well, you like, went to multiple Best Buys. I went to a couple of different ones because I, I was looking for the older version because I already have a bunch that I'm going to put in the array. <laughs> So that's another data point. Find a Actually, GPUs for sale, Alan. <laughs> all of the ones that I saw. So, Jim, you just ordered some online. <laughs> they canceled that order. Oh, they canceled that order. Okay. So the last time there was a sale, which was like, like freaking Walmart, which was like three weeks ago or something. Yeah. It was hit or miss if you get the old version or the new version. Now every drive I saw, and I think I checked like maybe thirty of them total, they were all in the new version. Ah. So nobody had the old one anymore. So you're going to get this new version of the drive. And it doesn't really matter. But check check um, the uh, part number. Yeah, so the first character in the part number, so if it on starts... On the bottom of the box, pick it up when you're at the store. Yeah, the bottom of the box. And you'll check. There's a uh, number that's uh, labeled DCM and then a part number of letters. You want the first letter to be M yep. or higher. Yep. The L's are the 128 meg cash version. Yep. Unless Which you're ultimately it doesn't really matter. This is some like, scientific discovery. No, but here's bullshit. the thing: if you're, 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 you're going to put an array yeah. of them together, you should try to match <laughs> drives. It, like it, you know, it's not going to. But it won't. I mean, it's it, not it really matter. wouldn't matter that much. Sure, but if you have the choice, like sure, it, yeah, know, yeah. But if you put a 128 meg and a 256 meg in an array, it's not going to blow up. Bad things are not going to happen. But you know, if you're buying them and you have the choice, you would be a little bit more informed. The more, so more you know, he right? Can have them anyway. So 160 bucks, that's damn cheap. Yeah, I agree. For eight terabyte drives. I just, uh, I'm just glad you guys are here to store things for me. So I don't have to worry yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Wait. We don't, we don't have enough. Right, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Start that's, downloading. That's, that's true, yeah. Fill the things. We're going to get that that Steam cache server up just and running here. Just dev null to the file <laughs> right. and you're fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That doesn't work the way you expect it to. Mm. All right, uh, last... Uh, I guess this is Alex. It is. Uh, these it are is. pictures of guns. You're trying to get my podcast taken off. Oh, no, 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 no. I would never, never. So this is a bullet bouquets. Um, I actually got this from my wife a couple years ago, but I brought it back up because now you can get etched ones. Um, these are spent ammo into a, it's a water tank, and they just basically shoot it into a big water tank, and then they make these bouquets out of them. Um, so, like, for people who have... What in the hell am I looking at? They're, they're bullets. These are bullets that look like flowers. Yeah, they're hollow yeah. point bullets. Okay. Yeah. That's what a hollow point does. But they're very small. It expands. Yeah. yeah. The I idea got I got Those it. are the ones that when they come out... Some of them are 45s. They're not very small. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out if the gun... Like, in this picture... Expended, well... No, no, the gun is not that big and the bullet that small. That's okay. what I'm looking at. No, I'm no, like, no. It's just a picture of the gun behind it, like, or something. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a real gun behind it, but yeah, it's, that's it's a small it revolver. Is. You're like, saying, Josh? Hold on. No, think, it's just, yeah, the actual, you know. Bullet yeah, that's the gun is, behind it. It's but the other one, yeah, okay. it's small. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they're tiny. I mean, it sits on your desk. It's not it's like a it's a. Flower pot. It's, you know, it's. Because look, those, look at the, those are the okay. So look, I mean, it's, look at it's the, this I love big. you, Dad. Look at you the know, bottom of the pot. Chest. 
<laughs> or maybe two no, chests. Look at what's in the head. bottom of the pot. Okay. Shells. So there's your shells. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the spent casings in the bottle. So there's, that's for, for perspective <laughs> of size, right? <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh. Seems like a waste of ammunition to me. <laughs> I know. Buy one for the wives. <laughs> I did buy one oh, no, for the no. wife. She loves Go it. The one that says "Hell hath no Tell fury like a mother's forty-five. Hey. Beware of mom. That, that could uh, be a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sending you somebody be a sleeping bullet. with the fishes. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're talking. <laughs> No, no, yeah. Ooh, yeah, you, you can select which, six blooms. Yeah, you can select what kind of blooms you want. You can get, you know, 40, oh, 45. It doesn't change the picture. Um, it's 36 blooms. That's, so, a, that's too many blooms. So everybody out there, the ask ACP. your significant other what kind of round they prefer for their bullet bouquet. <laughs> Lead-free bobby pin. <laughs> yeah, you don't really be you don't really want to be wearing lead, you know, as a general Yeah. You know, does bad pro things. tip. Yeah. Um, they're all coated, so like there's actually like a acryl, a clear acrylic on top of it. Uh-huh. I'm offended that this picture, so just because it's oxidized. for Mom's Day, has a pink gun behind it. Well, but eh, it's purple. Well, that is like sexist. That. Hey, I, I know some. I know a. I know a woman who does use that purple Glock, and she's amazing with it. So, do you think that's purple? I think that's, that's purple. That's, that's purple. It's a deadly weapon, man. What do you care what color it is? It's still gonna kill you. When they're pointing at you, you laugh at them. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it don't work that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, what are you gonna do with that pink gun? Shoot me! <laughs> Bang! What's that uh, uh, famous last war? What are you gonna do? Shoot <laughs> me! <laughs> man who was shot. Oh man. Yep. Uh, all right, that's gonna end the show. Uh, we really want to thank everybody for an amazing, uh, amazing, probably the most popular episode in the history of the PC Perspective podcast. Pure Havoc has edited their pledge to $100. There you go. I told from you. From 50 there to $100. I told you we could make it. Oh, no. Just have to believe. So, I, say I, the words. Thanks for know, all the work, he, man. He, he hasn't do... paid yet. Oh. If only oh, you gotta he wait would for... have said done. You don't pay him. Ninety nine, ninety nine. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's only effective Right. You got, you got, it's got to be, it's gotta be like... So I think there's a setting in Patreon where you can say once somebody pledges, they get charged immediately, and then the next time they wait for the beginning of the month. And we're not we're not using. I don't that. think we're using that because that wasn't the default when we set it up, and I don't know how to change it to be honest with you. But uh, that's okay. Thank you very much, Pure Havoc. You're an awesome person, uh, and if you want to come down here, Kane will give you a hug. It'll be totally worth it. So yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. PCPer.com slash podcast is the URL to go to to find our back episodes, our RSS feeds, our video files, the show notes, links, all the stories we talked about. All that kind of crap is available there. Uh, I have a lot of stuff to do between now and 9 a.m., so we will see you next week. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Ostrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malentano. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.